Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to Cyberlift. I've got an idea of something fun that I've wanted to try and that I haven't done yet. And I'm not exactly sure what I'll call it just yet, as with some of the challenge videos that I do. But I've got an idea. What we're going to do is we're going to turn on the Uber app specifically for food and deliveries. And we're going to see if the FSD beta can deliver food. Important things to consider, though, just like with the robo-taxi thing, it's not necessarily realistic to assume that the vehicle should get up right to an exact spot where somebody may be waiting or expecting. You almost have to imagine a not so distant future where it is just understood that with an autonomous delivery vehicle that you'll meet it at the curb or down in the lobby or you know somewhere where you can walk out, deposit the delivery, the food or package, and then the vehicle can go on its way. So that in mind, we're gonna see if the FSD beta can successfully deliver food. And that requires the same rules as with the robotaxi trips, meaning that I, it, you know, a disengagement means somebody didn't get their food and there's a mad customer. So this could be fun. We'll see where, we'll see where it goes. I'm kind of excited. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the app. We are set up for deliveries, which is predominantly food, but it can also sometimes be, you know, a run to Walmart or something interesting. In a case like that, you would expect somebody to load the vehicle up outside probably in a loading zone so all right it took a minute my friends but we have an order to sombrero mexican food curry mesa all right we're about 2.4 clicks out we're gonna go ahead and get engaged the beta right away as we make our way back around the little four leaf clover area of the claremont mesa exit around the 805 so we're heading to Sombrero Mexican Food. Now the goal is to get to the restaurant as well as to the drop off without me having to get involved. And we're running on the same settings that I had for the last gauntlet video. We're on chill beta, disabled highway speed based lane changing. And the idea with going both chill and DLC is to minimize the navigational errors that can occur from unnecessary lane changing to get around cars. Uh, a couple of videos back, I made a comment that a lot of people echoed the importance of, which is to focus on navigation over speed-based lane changing. It's more important to execute the route correctly than to try to get around other cars. You know, in an ideal scenario, you can do both. But until then, the focus should be on getting from A to B correctly with minimal issue. And the best way to do that, eliminate unnecessary parts and processes. Hello, first principles thinking. So this restaurant is relatively close. It took uh, nearly 15 minutes to get this to populate, but it is also 0640 AM. I say it that way because not everybody gets military time. Throw the AM in there for people who don't. Um, I come from a military background, so not only and my metric system, but also military hours. And uh, yeah, so apologies if that ever threw anybody off. Right now we are in the Kearney Mesa area of San Diego on Claremont Mesa Boulevard. Given this is a bit of a different format here with, you know, picking up food, I don't have a customer to talk to. So I'm going to try to fill in with commentary that may be entertaining or just pointless <laughs> at some areas. And I'm also kind of testing out the new audio setup in the car. You can see the microphone, the road mic. I actually had that for about eight months, but I didn't have a way to connect it to either of my GoPros, nor did I really have the, the funds or the priority to spend the money on the GoPro accessories to make it work. I actually had to rig something up myself because I thought that simply getting two different GoPro support equipment could mate together However, it didn't. <laughs> Come to find out that they're both meant to support the GoPro camera, not one another. So I ended up going to Home Depot, grabbing a couple of rubber clamps to hold the mic in place and some good old fashioned zip ties and created my own sort of mic boom. And it seems to be doing the job pretty well. Hopefully by the time you're seeing this, you've already seen my latest customer reactions video where we got to see the mic in action and preliminary 
studies, for lack of a better word, show that the, the microphone was picking up audio pretty well. All right, we are listening to a rather nice engine sound there. Hey, I may be a Tesla lover, but I'm also a total car guy. I mean, in my off time, I'm on Forza Motorsport doing all kinds of shenanigans and all sorts of cars that I've built. I'm a total gamer as well. Well, in these uh, Cyber Eats videos, you... Hey, I think we just figured out the name. Cyber Eats. See, I love how that happens. My innate organic nerdiness comes through and I just say stuff. That's how we came up with Friar's Challenge, Devil's Crossroads, which we'll be revisiting soon. And the third challenge, which even though 1012 is definitely not up for it, because I've kind of hinted at it and I really just want to do it, I think the third challenge is going to come soon. Uh, if not this week, maybe next week. I've found that with my new occupation, that I do have some time to kind of incorporate new things as I'm rebalancing my schedule. And I'll say it here that, yes, I do have a primary career now. Um, I'm really happy that I was able to actually find a way to focus on a passion on top of doing this. However, I am going to keep it separate from the channel. So work life and home life balance kind of kept in mind. Well, YouTube and work life balance kept in mind. I'm going to keep those separate. So apologies, you know, the mysterious career in the background. Some of you might be able to guess what it is. I can neither confirm nor deny what anyone guesses. All right, we're failing here. But, oh, okay, interesting. It <laughs> We had a green, but the vehicle kind of treated it like it was already turning red. Which is fine. So, we're next to a gas station, but this is also where the food is supposed to be. Here's an interesting case where, if you can see here on the map, I'm going to try to keep my little square off the screen so you can see what we're trying to do. We're by a lube center and car wash and a gas station. Uber Eats actually wants me to go straight and turn where that red truck is up there. Which, that looks like an illegal scenario anyway, because of all the double yellows. So I think that the Tesla nav is correct. So the food place is somewhere in here. So this is exactly what I was talking about. We need to assume that the vehicle can get to like a reasonable... Why are we not moving? Okay, well that's a fail. Yeah, it's green, but the car is just pretending like we can't go. <laughs> Alright, so the trip to the restaurant... Nah, we failed. We didn't even get within the uh, area to pick it up. And it's also weird because it's like a part of this gas station. All right. Yeah, let's just hit us with a doozy right off rip. I guess it wouldn't be one of my videos if we didn't have some outsized challenge to overcome. All right. So we can say pretty definitively that the trip to the... Wow, that's unfortunate trash everywhere. The trip to the actual restaurant, fail. Uh, well, food mart. All right, we're picking up from a food mart. But we can still see if it can get the food to the customer. So at least there's that. But I'm going to go ahead and get situated, pick up this food, and we will reconvene for the trip to the customer. We have got the food, a little chicken chipotle bowl. It's going to be about a 10-minute drive to the customer. In the spirit of being reasonable with a... Robo taxi cyber eats kind of a scenario. Can this actually get us out? You know, for this part, let me know what you guys think. It's like this is a really weird, annoying kind of pick up a drop off spot. It probably would just be like listed as unavailable for a, a cyber eats or a you know autonomous delivery type of scenario. The navs just got us going in a direction that would put us right next to that tanker truck anyway. Okay, now that we're here on the road though, well, we switched again. So, yikes. All right, we got it, so now we're in the beta. Talk about a rocky start here, but hey, it, you know, it's fun. It's the first one, so I'm definitely gonna put this up. That way we can see what it's like and let me know what y'all think, give me your feedback or, you know, what your thoughts are about the limitations or what you think is a reasonable standard of expectation on the system. Given the current state of the FSD beta, the whole robo taxi trip stuff, like, you know, the strictness of it, as well as this Cyber Eats 
last mile delivery thing, it might be a bit much for what the system can actually do. Oh, Beta's wiping its eyes off. It can't see too well, I guess. <laughs> now again, before doing any of these, I always make sure the cameras are clean. I am freshly calibrated. I'm seeing that more in the comments now. With every major patch release, I recalibrate the cameras and pretty much every morning or before I get in the car to start doing this type of driving, I wipe down all eight cameras. Um, well, mostly the five because the three on the windshield are always getting hit with the windshield wipers. Unless I see something really bad, like, I don't know, leftovers from birds. All right, let's get pushing through here. It's weird that I get treated the last left turn as like a, a no-go scenario. It was green and just sat there. Well, we're going, all right, you know, I guess something to think about. FSD beta driving habits and food moving around in the car. I mean, this is all wrapped up in a little Chipotle bowl, so it should be fine. Probably would want uh, some kind of a package holding system, because, you know, if a person's not going to be there to, like, buckle in the food or strap it down, then uh, an autonomous delivery vehicle is going to need some type of supports to keep it from sloshing around and spilling over the vehicle. If you've got drinks or messy food and sauces or ramen and broth separate, all kinds of things. What we'll likely do on the highway portion, given it not being quite as exciting, so I'll just fast forward and throw some music together. Let's take a look at the map here and see. Once we get off the highway, it's a short stint on the highway, not too long. It's going to be on the 163 for uh, about four and a half clicks. And then we're going to be in the Linda Vista area next to... Uh, some colleges and such and a lot of residential and it looks like we're gonna have to worry about an access road on Linda Vista Road to pull up next to the house should be fun to see if the FSD beta can do this I mean we're on 10.12.2 that has been notoriously rocky in its application and this is kind of more of an example of day-to-day -day use that I talk about because the challenge videos Friars challenge and all they're deliberately hard. They're meant to make the system go through hell as a good way to be able to measure improvement or like drastic improvement or how it's measured over time. If you haven't checked it out, if you look at the challenge playlist, the Friars challenge goes all the way back to FSD beta 10.5. All right, entering the 163 highway. Cruising along pretty smoothly here. Exiting the highway. Curious to see how the audio comes through on the louder wind noise and such. Hopefully there's not too much echo. Right. So we gotta make this right onto Genesee and then left onto Linda Vista Road, I believe, and then we have an access road to worry about. We're in the kind of starts of the early morning rush hour. So, eh, at least to our benefit, we're not going the way everyone else is going. Hopefully we flow right on through. Give me a nice smooth ride. Pretty good, pretty good. Nice quick decision to get into the left lane. I believe the lanes at the turn on the Linda Vista is a double left lane scenario. So hopefully we choose the correct lane, which should be the right left turning lane. That way we can flow right onto the road. Oh, I was wondering why we are going so slow. The speed limit through here is about 40k, so we're going about 7% over, which is 43k. Why are you beeping at me? <laughs> okay, chose the correct path. Will we make the green light? Oh, now it's choosing to change lanes right there. I would not have done that. I'm going to report that back to Tesla. Last minute lane changes like that are unnecessary. I mean, no cars around us, so it wasn't a safety concern, but still, it should have just stayed in the right turning lane because then it would have been in the right lane and not need to make any lane changes. And 
I believe this is kind of an access road scenario coming up. We're going to make a very quick right onto Ulrich Street and then an immediate left onto Morley Street. So, whoa, what? Oh, wow. My mirrors remembered one of the times I had to go through that drive through for Uber Eats. That's funny. All right, flashing red scenario. So it's treated as a stop sign. But on the screen, it's not reflecting as a flashing red. Okay. Report that and push on through with the throttle. The car's fighting me a little bit. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like, oh, well, no, that was a... It was a flashing red. It should have treated that as a stop, but it wasn't registering it. It's even worse when it registers a solid red as a flashing red and tries to go. And it's like, no, that's not okay. Oh, uh, here we have one of our classic little non-existent turning lanes. I struggle where to put the blame for this. I mean, we know as people that they can use that as a turning lane, but think about it from like a logical standpoint or a computer standpoint. Yeah, like why get there where the car knows like it's not a lane it can fit into. There's nobody behind us that can, you know, make it struggle here. You can already see we gotta make this immediate left after turning right. No one's coming though, which is good. So come on, get in there. Oh, it's very unsure. Really rocky. Okay, there we go, there we go. We got a stopped vehicle. Let's see if it actually executes properly here. There you go. Good, good. All right. And aside from this, the location of the food spot, we are actually arriving at the destination. Very good. So I'm going to disengage it so I can get kind of off the road and not block people. But yeah, we got to the, uh, the drop off area. See, this is an apartment complex where I would expect in the future you would meet the vehicle or pick it up from the vehicle. You wouldn't expect the car to go up to your door, right? Okay, cool. So let's complete this and see if we can maybe get one more in.